الشيك تاد عليا لازم نصبر لازم ما نويت يسمح فيا ما نويت يسمح فيا عطاك لمت وندم تمنيت يرجع ليا يفاجي من القلب الهم وتبرد النار شوية وتبرد النار شوية يزول من القلوب I'm James Clayton and I'm in the airport and um, slightly hungry. England's playing football behind me, well, not behind me, but you know, in the TV. On to this next trip to Morocco, I've decided to not bring my medication, which is a real gamble and I'm quite scared, um, but I'm quite excited as well to see if I can get through this trip sans medication. So uh, let's see. I decided literally at the last minute to leave my medication behind, which was quite scary to be honest. I just suddenly realised that if I didn't do that, it, was like, it felt like a spiritual thing. It's, it felt like um, it was very symbolic. I felt like I had to trust in the journey, and if I didn't throw that away, I wasn't fully trusting in the journey and trusting in God and, and in, in the universe to deliver me, you know. And, and until I did that, I felt like it was. I was only halfway there, so I just feel really happy to be here, you know, and I think I've really done the right thing. I don't feel stressed at all, you know, and sometimes you have to weigh up what's really important. And for me, what's important is freedom. And without freedom, without travel and freedom to travel as I want to, I'm not happy as a person. And if I'm not happy as a person, then, you know, What's the point in taking medication to be healthy, to be healthier, when you're not happy, which in turn makes you not healthy, if you understand my meaning. I'm strong enough physically and emotionally to push through this condition of mine without medication. And if I can prove that I can do that, then it's plain sailing. So, inshallah, let's see how this next few weeks goes.
Okay, so here I am in Casablanca. Um, I don't know if you're going to hear anything because it's so noisy here. I'm just sat uh, with Jay, my brother, who's filming now. And uh, this is Han, this is Safia. Hey, she just wants to get some water. So we're in, we're basically on the edge of the Medina. Uh, so this is actually the wall of the Medina we're sitting beneath. The Medina is like the ancient part of the, of the, of the city, the old medieval part. Um, and it's been about a week now since I've been in Morocco and uh, without the medication still. I'm a little bit tired because uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff like cycling and surfing and swimming and working out and teaching at the school and blah blah blah. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good like you know it's uh, it's been very invigorating and it's it's nice to just be in the thick of it really. So we are in, where are we? Uh, what's the name? Ukria. Uh, Urika. 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 A place called Urika. It's about, oh gosh, it's about an hour or so away from Marrakesh, Marrakesh. There's a lovely sort of natural waterfall and a stream going right through all these sort of various small settlements and villages. Um, it's a place where lots of Moroccan tourists come actually. So I'll do some footage of that later. Um, been in Morocco now, this is the third week. On the third week, and uh, yeah, feeling very good, very healthy, and strong still. Um, the culture sort of over here is much more Berber, as they say, um, and it's I really like it. It's more interesting for me than the Arab culture. It's a bit more, it's more connected to the earth. You know, they sort of wear more kind of earthly jewelry, and it's a bit less money, money. Um, but it's nice. It's very, it's a melange of all the cultures all blend very much. Um, but it is nice to be back in kind of rural life a bit and uh, hopefully I'll capture some nice scenes of that and uh, now I'm just going to sit and have some uh, some nice bread oh my gosh that looks gorgeous really nice food it's a thing called amalol which is like a mixture between argan oil um, with almond uh, almond nuts crushed up and honey it's delicious it's very famous uh, and they make it quite a lot here so um yeah it's got these new beads as well uh, 15 durums which is like it's not even one pound 50 really gorgeous <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
sitting on the train coming back from Marrakesh, heading towards back to the coast to Casablanca, round to Rabat, where I'm going to stop for the night and eventually head up north to Chefchaou in the Blue City. Uh, interesting few days, uh, stayed in a really interesting Berber village, Tachal, Tachalot, Tachalot, something like this, um, just outside of Marrakesh. Um, and it was interesting. We passed through Marrakesh this morning, and uh, it's just not. You know, I'm pretty committed to the idea that Marrakesh is not for me. Um, it's not my kind of place. The people there, there's different energy. Um, and within half an hour of walking into Medina, we were walking back out, ready to get the bus and get out of that city. You know, the people just have a different mentality in the Medina. And um, it's different when you go and stay with someone in Marrakesh and you enjoy their home and their hospitality, but if you want to really see the city and go around, it's, it's difficult unless you've got lots of money and you're not bothered about how you part with it. But for me, that's not really why I travel, you know, it's not my, it's not my style. But yes, yeah, nice, it was nice to be up in the mountains by the rivers and uh, to be around. The Berber people are very interesting. Um, you know, Berber is not really a term that I like to use because of its uh, connotations and where the word comes from. Um, but it seems that the Moroccans use that word all the time, and, and they don't really allow, they don't really have another word for the native people as a whole. Um, oh, we just stopped. But yeah, there are those amazing moments when you travel where you're sitting or standing opposite somebody who speaks not a word of your language and you don't speak a word of theirs and yet you're communicating with eyes and spirit and that's really interesting for me I just find that there's some magic that we all have in us that in fact can be spread there's something beyond words and you feel that when you travel. You feel that between people and places. How do you feel to be back in this hostel, James? I'm really happy to be back in this hostel because it's just simple. Sometimes I think with travel, you just you can get all these sort of like grand ideas. You think, oh, okay, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. And actually, in the end, all you really want to do is just chill out somewhere a little bit familiar and just relax. And we deserve, we've earned it and we deserve it. So, yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah. <sighs> well, so. Here I am in Rabat, um, just in a hostel, a traveller's hostel. And um, yeah, so Safia left today, so now it's just me and my brother Jay. <sighs> I feel quite emotional, quite sad to see her go, really sad actually. I can just, when I close my eyes, all I can see is her just sort of mincing around through the, through the Medina. I'm behind her, just trying to keep up. She just walks at such a fast pace. And um, she just is an extraordinary person. Drives me crazy. She drives me absolutely up the wall, but I really love her very much. And she's such an interesting companion to have when you travel, you know, she's just, she makes you laugh, she makes you cry, she makes you pull your hair out, you know, with, oh. What a person. If anyone listening to this has a person like that in their life, you know, just realise they are unique for what they are. They might drive you crazy. They might cause you stress and pain and tears. But they also bring you so much joy, so much love and laughs and discoveries, revelations. Illuminations. And that's really important. It's important to realise that everyone is a double-edged sword and people are like that. I've got some great qualities as a person, I've got some really bad qualities, you know. 
and that's why I get on very well with some people and not as well with others. That's just that's what we all are. We're all perfectly imperfect. We're all we're all like the elements, you know. Truly, we're wild at heart. We're raw, and we cover it up. We cover it up with clothing and styles and ideas and by professing what and who we are with statements, you know. But really, we're not that. We're just elements rolling around in this crazy vortex that is the world, that is the universe. Just vortex of different energies manifesting in various forms. And we are actually changing all the time, learning. We don't know nothing. We don't know shit. Excuse my language, but it's true. We know nothing. He who speaks is a fool. He who listens is extremely wise. And um, the more I spend time around these interesting people, as much as it's challenging, I just learn so much from them and their way of looking at things. And yeah, I don't always agree with everything they do, but thank God for these experiences. Thank God that I'm still allowed to be a student and to learn from such incredible such incredible spirits. So uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for my brother now to come back. He's going to get a lighter, we can have some cigarettes and just think of Wendy and <sighs> Wendy Safiya Raja Bagli. What an extraordinary person. She's shown me Morocco in a way that nobody else would and <laughs> my gosh. What an interesting teacher slash student she is of mine. Love you, darling. Or may you fly free. Place, James? I, I I actually am lost for words. It's just... I feel really emotional, really. It's crazy. I don't know how one minute you can be in this, like... I've, you just get used to the sound of city and noise when you're in Morocco. In all these places. Even when you're in the countryside, or when we stayed in that Berber village, it was like, there was still noise all day, every day, and all night. And suddenly you're here. All I can hear is crickets. And then a couple of guys, like talking in the background. <laughs> it's just surreal, I feel like I might have died. Maybe that bus never made it, and maybe this is some sort of intermediate paradise. <laughs> I'm on new fence. Yeah, but before it didn't have a... Before it was made, I don't know. There was another, another one. Right, I don't know if this is going to show my face at all. I have no idea. I've just set this onto some kind of automatic aperture, but I just have to say, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's happened. One minute we're in Marrakesh, you know, we're having all this trouble, we're all f f squabbling and arguing and getting into frays with the locals. The next minute, all the Back on the train, we're in Rabat. We're all crazy, crazy. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's all lovely architecture. It's very colonial. All this, this, that, and the other, talking lovely. Then we are on a train again. We're just two people. One of them's gone. We're sitting with this this Moroccan family who, you know, a very interesting Moroccan family who didn't speak anything other than Arabic. And there's me like trying to speak Arabic, having a conversation, using half like 
you know, guesswork and half um, Google Translate. Then we're jumping off another train, blah, 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 we're here, we're there, we're on a bus going around the mountains, it's insane, I feel really sick. Then I fall asleep and then suddenly I hear a voice telling me I'm in Chef Shawan, that I need to get off the bus. Then suddenly, I'm dragged up through this kind of pathway, like through a fields of marijuana on a Land Rover, through the most unbelievable bucolic scenes I think I've ever seen. Just incredible pastoral vistas. And then the next minute I'm in this absolute paradise on top of a hill, just overlooking absolute tranquillité. I've, all I can hear is crickets and there's murmurs of voices and little settled settlements around. And it's just incredible. And, and we're really stoned as well. Really fucking stoned. Which makes things quite surreal. I don't, you probably can't see me or Jay, actually. Jay's just there. Hello, I'm here. He's just there, taking it in. But at least, hopefully, the sound will survive of this. Just the most crazy, beautiful, messed up life. How do you turn this thing off? Oh, yeah. Learned to do this in sub Saharan Africa, so uh, still applies here the same rule in North Africa where it's just as hot and water is just as uh, precious. Jason. Morning. How are you feeling? Tired. Very tired. Very tired. So why are you tired? Well, I smoked a lot of weed last night. <laughs> That's probably why you're tired then. But you slept quite a lot. Yeah. Yes, we slept quite a lot. So we're leaving the Rift Mountains today and heading down into Chef, if all goes to plan. Stay for a couple of nights before heading to Fez. So how are you feeling roughly? speaking about your experience in Morocco as a whole. It's been a lovely, lovely experience here. I'm glad, I'm glad I came. It's been, been <clears throat> a little, little bit difficult throughout the times, but I suppose that comes with any travel, really, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I definitely came on this experience, and it's been great as a whole. And it's <clears throat> a shame to leave, but I'm also looking forward to going home. Wicked. And so what, um, what would you say have been the hard parts? Well... Going to Marrakesh was was the most fun. No, Marrakesh is shit. <laughs> I tell everyone they don't believe me, but still. Mm. Travelling around, you can get a bit sort of tiring. You know, the whole backpacking thing, sitting on trains for about five hours, or waiting around and having to get to A to B very quickly. I mean, that can, that can that can take its toll. Mm. In the end, it does all become worth it? You end up in places like this and think, okay. It's actually quite cool. Yeah, it's kind of worth it. It's funny, it's a double-edged sword travelling. You know, there's, there's a lot of... Whoop, this chair's falling apart. <laughs> it is a lot of hard work, but you do get a lot in return if you just uh, push through. I mean, for example, we are here. 
and we have no idea how we're going to get out of here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nice. dry I just seriously considered wiping horse shit on them. All we've had to eat this morning is bread, a bit of olive oil and some locally grown olives, drunk some water, and we're on our way with our, our one bag, bit of music. down finally to the city Whew, that was a long arduous journey but we're here so hello I'm just sitting in, a, sitting in a little cafe waiting for Jay. He's just gone off to the toilet. Uh, to find a toilet, should I say. I managed to take a cheeky wee in a hotel. And we are in Chef Shaun, or Shaun as the locals call it. Um, you may have seen some previous footage. We were up in the mountains, stayed there last night. And we literally walked down from the mountains all the way through the marijuana fields, through all the farmers' fields with the donkeys and steep rocky slopes and whatnot all the way to here uh, to the blue city right down in the valley it's taken us a good hour and a half possibly two hours to get here and uh, it's beautiful man it's it's quite cool here because of the the nature of the um the geographical nature of 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 the of the city the way it's all sort of small alleyways very shady uh, the locals here seem very friendly, very tranquil, and uh, it's nice, it's really nice. There's a good feeling here, and we're just going to sit in the shade and chill for a while, and uh, enjoy the city. Well, good morning. Uh, it's about nine o'clock in the morning here in Chef Shaun. Um, gosh, what a crazy, crazy 24 hours that was. One of those really crazy moments in travel where you're just like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Why, why do I do this? You know, why do I put myself in these situations? We got up in the morning, hiked down from the mountains, all through the marijuana fields, and decided to spend our last couple of nights in this area, in actually in the city itself, um, and we'd found it was a bit of a crazy hike. You know, it's very hot and it's what well, extremely hot. You know, extremely hot, and you know, because of the nature of how things went, we we didn't we didn't leave very early. So we hiked in one of the hottest parts of the day. Um, but we made it, you know, and then there was a um, like a traveller's sort of hostel that we found which was really nice looking right by the Medina gate that um, we'd found before and so we decided to check in there for a couple of days and the guy at the reception was really nice and chatting and telling me all about the history of the place and we checked in it was basic but it was you know it kind of worked 
it was, you know, what we needed basically, it was cheap. Um, my brother's just in the shower, which is why well, there's that strange grunting. Um, anyway, so we went out and we were doing bits and bobs, we were trying to get some, um, our tickets for our flights printed in advance because for some stupid reason Ryanair in Morocco don't let you use the mobile app so you have to print your tickets out which is easier said than done let me assure you I mean we don't carry around laptops and things you know and luckily we did find some cyber cafes and we managed to get one ticket printed and we had to go to another one to get another ticket printed and blah 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 but anyway we made it in the end we've got the tickets printed um, and yeah Anyway, so by the time we got back to the hostel, it was dark, and um, something was really wrong. The people at the reception, the young chap who checked us in, and his friend who was in the background earlier in the day, they were just off their faces. Now the thing is, I've, I've spent a lot of time around people that take a lot of drugs, I will say, and I know what someone on a strong Class A drug looks like. These people were off their faces. They were acting in an extremely, extremely paranoid manner. Their eyes were like bulging out of their heads and they were gurning. Um, and straight away, I was, my heckles were up and I was like, there's something seriously wrong with these people. They started questioning us, didn't know who we were. Bear in mind, we'd left some of our stuff there, you know. Um, they started questioning us. Just checking this was coming. Um, they were like interrogating us, asking them how much we paid, how we paid for the night, how much we paid, how we paid for the rooms. Keep repeating themselves. Um, claiming that I, I, I checked in and spoke speaking Spanish and all this kind of stuff, you know, so speaking to me in Spanish really quickly, explaining the situation, quite sort of like very intense and like desperate, sort of that kind of fine line between desperately intense and kind of aggressive. Um, and I felt extremely uncomfortable. And we sat in the room and, and my brother Jay just sort of sat on the bed and he started just sort of chilling out doing his bits and just sort of probably processing what was going on. I said to him, don't get comfortable. I said, I feel really wrong here. Something's wrong with these people. I don't trust them. They're on drugs and it's not that I think it's them that's weird, but people on strong drugs, they can just be crazy. Um, and you're in a foreign place and they're not really speaking your language properly and, and it just felt very strange. We've made the big error of paying for two nights in advance that morning because we were so happy with the place in the light of day um, and we literally packed our bags and we just zoomed out there uh, one by one we just crept through the reception just left didn't say anything to them um, just it just got out of there um, you know in the long run yeah we might have lost I think it like 10 pounds each it's not there's nothing in, in, in English money and it's a bit annoying for me as a traveler I've been to so many places, you know, and, and I've, I've never really been duped that much. But, you know, lessons learned. Um, we made a mistake of not choosing a more reputable place in a city we don't know. We chose to sort of choose something a bit more kind of authentic looking and quirky. It was gorgeous and I would have loved to have blogged about it and talked about it, but these people were really... I just felt very unsafe and in those situations I think you need to assess what's really more important, you know. Luckily we managed to find somewhere last night, you know, walking around the city at night with our rucksacks at dark, you know, all the places we kept going to kept saying they were full and it was it's quite a sort of hard feeling and I've had quite a bad stomach as well, so I've had diarrhoea and I've had quite a lot of sugar lows and I'm trying to sort of like, you know, lead the gang and it's like, whoo, it is quite tough but, you know, this is travel and this is... This is, this is the double-edged sword that I always talk about, and sometimes it's like this. You know, you do have these moments where it's like, why am I doing this? Why do I put myself in these awful scenarios? I just want to be somewhere safe again, you know. But that's okay, because that will pass, and, you know, we're going to go get up now, have some breakfast somewhere, and rethink our last day and night in Chef Shaun before heading on to Fez. And hoping to the heavens that this day is much less sort of crazy than yesterday. Please God. Okay. So basically, um, after a day laying in bed, just trying to like recover and exist, um, and really kind of not getting on very well with the city and the heat and the tourism and stuff. Um, we've come out now and it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of evening time, it's much cooler and we've walked up right to the top of the city to the, to the, um, the top of the Medina 
and uh, found this kind of like river area, which, um, which is quite interesting. There's lots of Moroccans here, lots of Moroccan tourists. It's very fresh, the water is extremely cold. And we're feeling quite good again, I think, you know, it's, uh, we've kind of come full circle, our stomachs are feeling a bit better and, you know, we're starting to feel a bit like the beauty of the journey is coming back to us. Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I think this is recording. Yeah. So, last night in Chef Shawan, um, feeling better. I pretty much always these days carry around uh, some antibiotics just in my bag, just in case. And I had some ciprofloxacin, um, which I normally find after a couple of couple of days of taking it twice a day. I find it does get rid of my any sort of diarrhea problems you get from bacteria because you know when you're moving from place to place and you're changing water all the time and you know it's it is difficult and there are lots of different bacteria on the planet and they're all different they're all slightly different and your body can't just be used to all of them so you know it, it is handy definitely to always have some some antibiotics that can deal with that kind of thing um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, so we had a nice last kind of afternoon, sort of evening, and Chef Shan, we're just chilling now back in the room. Hopefully going to get a good night's sleep. Don't know how noisy it's going to be here, but, you know, I'll throw things over the balcony if I have to. Um, like I say, feeling better, which is a massive relief. And um, overall, feeling pretty good about Chef Shao, and I do feel like... If I'm honest, it's somewhere I probably wouldn't come back to. I wouldn't, let's say, I wouldn't go out of my way to come back here. Whilst it's very beautiful and... Nice music. Whilst it's very beautiful, um, and it's lovely to see blue streets and things, it's just too touristy for me. You know, I just find that Moroccans, and, and really a lot of places, but Moroccans don't seem to sort of they change when there's money involved I don't know what it is you know when there's when there's tourism they change and they can be a bit crazy sometimes it is also very hot here and I know there is a lot of poverty and it's not so black and white but I, all my sort of iffy experiences in Morocco have been in very touristy places Marrakesh and Chef Um, you know I'm not saying that it's it would be the same for everybody, it's, it might be also the way that I travel, but I've travelled in other parts of Morocco and never had any problems, so you know, it's, you know, it is what it is, but um, quite ready to get back on the road really, we've got a couple of days in Fez before heading back to London, so um, inshallah, let's see what these next few days bring and <laughs> onwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sun is going down on Chef Shawan. One last time for me. Finally, Fez. 
I've waited a long time. A long time to come to Fez. Finally. And uh, it's bloody hot. It's really, really hot. And, um, you know, we had quite a few crazy days in Chef Shaolin. Chef Shaolin was very interesting. Um, and perhaps one day I will experience Chef Shaolin again. But as a, t I don't know, I, it wasn't quite for me, to be honest. It, the energy wasn't quite right in Chef Shaolin. I'm not sure if it's just the wrong time of year or and my coming to Chef Shaolin just wasn't serendipitous, which is interesting for me because I've had a lot of serendipity throughout my travels, always. That's been a real theme, you know, and I was thinking just a minute ago about what makes my travelling different from a lot of people's and I realise it's because it is to do with this kind of pursuit of serendipity in a way. I like feeling I like to feel when life is taking over you know there are those moments when you realize you'll just be talking to somebody and they'll say hey you know I'm going to this place you know and, and the way there's something in the way they say it or something in that moment that they say it makes you kind of go like that's what I should be doing I meant to go with you or or that's meant to spur me on to another idea do you know what I mean something there's something serendipitous and I kind of wait for those moments in traveling and you know, I was thinking about this because I was a bit... I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that on this trip I didn't get to see the Sahara again. You know, like... The Sahara, for me, was a place that just... It was kind of like an out-of-body experience, and... The idea of be being quite close is quite difficult for me, and I was very close, really. I would have travelled for another sort of six, seven hours, and I would have been there, but... It just wasn't right. The feelings weren't right, and so I'm glad that I didn't do that, you know. And then when I was in Chef Shao, and there was a nomad, a Berber chap, selling sort of Berber wares, and I was talking to him a bit. And then the next day I went back and I saw him again, I was chatting to him some more, and he was from the town that I'd been to, actually, last year. And uh, we chatted for a bit, and then I eventually bought something off him, mostly because he just had... He hadn't really sold much, you know, and whatever. I just thought it was quite nice, but he uh, he sold me this, which is like a... Apparently it's the Tuareg symbol of the Sahara, and it was quite nice, and he gave it to me, and he said, you know, that this was a promise that I would return to the Sahara, which is quite nice. Um, and then, yeah, I gave him one of my business cards, which was really funny, a really funny kind of cross of culture there. And on my business card, I've got... Um, a picture of me in the sand dunes, the place he was from, the exact sand dunes that he goes to all the time, you know, that he sort of grew up in and takes people on tours to all the time, you know, so that was quite a nice thing. And then here now I am in Fez at this, I've chosen to come to, or to bring us, me and my brother, to the hostel that had the best reviews on TripAdvisor and all the hostel world sort of sites. I went for something that I knew was guaranteed to be safe and nice and just for our last four days you know three days to just have a kind of bit of rest so we don't arrive in the UK like destroyed and and sort of frantic and it's been a really good decision this is a really lovely hostel it's called Funky Fairs which is a kind of funny name but um, actually when you get here it's, it's really nicely done a lot of sort of um, authentic um, furnishings and things and it's just nice you know I'm meeting lots of nice people and chatting to them about their experiences in Morocco and their travels and blah 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 and I was talking to one girl who was in my dorm and she just come back from the Sahara and she said do you want some sand from the Sahara and I was like yeah I do and I had this pot in my bag and so I brought it out and there's literally a tiny handful of sand from the Sahara now in this little pot and that was nice again that was another sign from the Sahara that I would return indeed. I think there's a lot to be said um, if you get the chance to travel in a country with someone who lives there and speaks the language or speaks at least some and knows how things work your experience will be entirely different um, and time and time again I've proved that to myself and I've managed to find people through various medium um, and I've always had a more authentic experience and 
if it means a, you know contacting someone in advance and arranging a price that, so they will be your guide for the three days or whatever you're in the city then do it because it makes a difference you know and if you're a bit tired of just being a strong traveler all the time you know it can be quite nice and it can be worth it and really you know our in the West, our money goes a long way here, so it's something to consider, you know, as opposed to just going on like package tours. The depth of my travels goes far beyond, far, far beyond what I imagine people experience in those other ways. But, you know, this is the life that I choose and I don't expect anybody else to choose the same life and vice versa, I don't expect people to sort of disagree with the way I live my life, you know. The bell's just gone downstairs. I'm praying that is my brother returning so I can eat and also relax because I feel slightly anxious when he goes out on his own just because it is crazy. I think I hear his voice. Please may there be food. Alhamdulillah. Travel is a funny thing. And if you can take the good with the bad, you're never gonna look back. Let's go. 